Please turn the way toward that is going where no Corvette has gone before at 495 horsepower and 470 foot pounds of torque, making this the most powerful Corvette ever. We are seeing 0 to 60 times under 3 seconds. The 2020 Corvette Stingray goes on sale in the U.S. It will start at less than $60,000. We are just getting started. Please welcome Director of Chevrolet Crossover and Passenger Car Marketing, Steve Majoros. You know, it's hard to believe it's been nearly three months since we put the sports car world on notice with the introduction of the first ever mid-engine 2020 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray Coupe. And the reaction that day and every day since has been nothing short of amazing to both the car and to the process by which customers can discover and buy the Corvette of their dreams. On July 19th alone, more than 1.3 million people visited Chevy.com, an all-time record and a number five times more than our daily average. And that helped make July of 2019 the highest visited month ever on Chevrolet.com, with almost 12 million visits about four million more than a typical month. There's so much to see and learn at Chevy.com, but the debut of the Corvette Visualizer has clearly been the star of the show. Users have spent more than 214,000 hours building and sharing more than 1.3 million Corvettes while spending an average of seven minutes exploring the Visualizer. And the more exotic, the better with Rapid Blue, one of our new colors, also being the most popular. And we've received more than 37,000 reservations from the Chevrolet.com pre-order functionality alone. And this is on top of strong demand reported by our dealer partners. But I want to make something very clear. We are still taking orders for the 2020 Corvette Stingray. So we encourage you, uh, if you're interested, please visit your local Chevy dealer and we can help you get that process started. In short, we made history on several levels when it came to the first mid-engine Corvette. From the location of the reveal, to the car's design, engineering, social media engagement, and website traffic. And now we're going to make history again. We're here in the Rocket Garden at the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex. A very special place to reveal a very special car. And to highlight the influence that aerospace design and innovation have had on Corvette over the years. And as many of you know, there has always been a strong tie between astronauts and Corvette. To explain more about this exciting location, I want to bring up Theron Protzi, Chief Operating Officer of the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, along with a couple of very special guests. Theron? Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. At NASA, it is often said that we stand on the shoulders of giants. Nowhere is that more apparent than in the rocket garden. Behind every rocket you see are great men and women, engineers and astronauts, designers and thinkers who turned dreams into history. Our goal at the Visitor Complex is to tell the NASA story in the most compelling and immersive way. Absolutely possible. Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex offers a mix of thrilling simulators, breathtaking attractions, behind the scene tours, interactive exhibits, larger than life 3D space films, rocket launch viewing opportunities, and so much more. And each day, visitors also get the opportunity to meet true veteran NASA astronauts. As Steve mentioned, the astronauts have a rich history and appreciation for the Corvette since the beginning of America's crewed space program. Ed Cole, President of General Motors with Jim Rathman, Chevrolet of Melbourne, Florida, offered the astronauts a special plan in which they were given the use of any Chevrolet automobile for a year at the minimal cost of one dollar. I'm hearing they're honoring that again this year, by the way. <laughs> for many astronauts, Corvette was the car of choice. 
This evening, we are fortunate to have many astronauts here with us. Could all of you please stand, wait for applause, and thank you for attending tonight. Astronauts, please stand. It was not hard getting him out here, I can tell you that. I'd like to welcome Bruce Melnick, who served as a mission specialist aboard Space Shuttle Discovery for STS-41 in 1990, and as part of the crew of STS-49 on the maiden flight of Space Shuttle Endeavour in 1992, when Melnick served as flight engineer to, to say a few words. Oh, thank you, Derek. imagine what it's like to be out here and, and celebrate in this reveal of the new 2020 Corvette convertible. I mean, to me, it's, it reminds me of waiting, I mean, waiting for this reveal. It reminds me of waiting for my second flight on the very first maiden voyage of Endeavour. I mean, waiting to fly a new spaceship like this. And this kind of reminds me of that. You know, as, as we all know, astronauts go way back with their Corvettes. Uh, there's, I've always been a fan, enthusiast, and quite frankly, I've been quite a uh, regular Corvette owner. A matter of fact, w between my wife, Kim, and I, we've owned nine Corvettes. And right now, right now I only have one, we only have one right now, and it happens to be a 2016 Z06 uh, C7R Special Edition model. And yeah. it is quite a ride. I mean, I've got to park that here at the parking lot. It is just really, really awesome. Uh, but, however, I was happy to hear that Theron said that $1 lease is coming back. Because I was going to say that if that ever happens, I'm going to be all over that. <laughs> you know, having had those Corvettes and being able to participate in uh, Corvette high-performance driving events, running around a bunch of the uh, road courses around the United States, I've had the opportunity to experience the performance of these Corvettes. I mean, what a car, and we're able to see how that performance has increased over the years. It's been just amazing. Um, and now, when you look at the Corvettes that we have, my Z06 goes from zero to 100 at about the same speed, at the same time and distance as the Space Shuttle does. So, I mean, that's really saying something. Of course, one's horizontal, one's vertical. But I gotta tell you that four or five seconds that it happens, the shuttle's a lot rougher and the Corvette's a much smoother car and we've come such a long, long way. So with that, I'm standing in the way of the reveal, so uh, let's go ahead and launch this road rocket. Can't wait to see it. Thank you, Bruce. And now I'd like to welcome astronaut Steve Smith, a veteran of four space flights covering 16 million miles and seven spacewalks, totaling 49 hours and 25 minutes to come up and say a few words. So, Steve? Yeah, thank you, Gary. Thank you. I've got my $1 bill ready. I've got a here from Chevrolet. I've got one for each of you guys, too. So it's a thrill to be here as we have a huge change in the Corvette line, the C8 first mid engine. It's a thrill to be here in the Rocket Garden celebrating this. Um, for many years, of course, the space program has had this association with astronauts. Uh, the Corvette is the iconic American sports car because of its performance, power, and speed. And the early American astronauts were also our heroes. And so it's not a big surprise that the icons of the space program drove the iconic car of America, the Corvette. And it's also not a surprise that once the leasing program ended that many of us still pursued owning a Corvette. Uh, for me, I always wanted to be an astronaut and a Corvette owner. At the fourth grade, I started drawing pictures of rocket ships and spacewalkers. In sixth grade, I had the opportunity to move next door to someone in San Jose, California, and their family owned a 1966 white Chevrolet Corvette. And so I got many rides in that Corvette, and that really sealed my interest in both being an astronaut and a Corvette owner. Uh, four years later, after scanning the San Jose Mercury News religiously, the used car section for four years, you're always going to the Chevrolet section and seeing what Corvettes were available. In September of 1975, I noticed an ad in the newspaper for a 66 big block blue in Redwood City, which was about 15 miles from me. Uh, my father and I drove up there on September 25th. The Jefferson Starship song Miracles was playing on the... Uh, on the radio, and when I saw the car, I was really just so thrilled. Dennis was the second owner of the car. It was in meticulous shape. It did have some American mags on it, some Mickey Thompson uh, valve covers, but besides that, it was uh, low mileage and very stock. 
And its color was not only blue, it was NASA blue, spelled N-A-S-S-A-U, but pretty close to NASA blue. And in fact, Neil Armstrong's vehicle here is also NASA blue. Um, we went out uh, on a freeway nearby, it's Freeway 280, it's six lanes, it's very uh, seldom actually full, so we could really take the car out and run. Within a couple minutes, we were up to 120 miles per hour. As you can imagine, as a 16-year-old high school junior, I wanted to buy that car right then. <laughs> so we got back to his house, and I bought the car on the spot. Um, within a couple weeks, I went to Sears and bought you know, some Craftsman uh, engine analyzers, timing light, etc., so that I could perform the service on the car over the years. And it got me through high school, college, and my entire NASA career. Um, along the way, in 2008, I had a full restoration done, body off where we redid the chassis, rebuilt the engine and everything, and it came out really as a show car, so I started only driving it on the weekends. In 2017, we moved it to a nearby uh, car museum called The Great Highway, run by Gary Pollock up in Redwood City. It's about 20 miles from where I am. And so now I only drive it on the weekends when the same road, Highway 280, and the same stretch of road is wide open, so we can still crank on it out there. And so it's really been a big part of my life, and I'm so thankful. Uh, I have to tell you, as a child, I never dreamed the astronaut dream would come true or the Corvette ownership would come true. So it's uh, amazing to be here tonight to share with all of you this amazing night. So congratulations to the Chevy team for an amazing transition here to the C8. We can't wait to see the convertible. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Steve back up to the stage. And thank you to our guests uh, for being here. We really appreciate it. Well, it's clear that we, uh, well, let's make one thing clear. We'll talk about that now or at least later. Uh, but uh, we have clearly made history once, and we are about to make it again. So without further ado, let's see for the first time the world premiere of the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette Convertible. Welcome, Chevrolet Corvette Executive Chief Engineer, Taj Juchter. Thanks, Steve and Theron. Well, it's been a couple of exciting months uh, for Corvette. Uh, we've been spending a fair amount of time uh, at different Corvette events since the reveal, and it's been really uh, heartwarming to see the reactions we've gotten from people. Uh, we set records uh, everywhere we went, uh, from the boards of people who attended Carlisle to all the people who joined us for the 25th anniversary at the museum. And everywhere we went, it's uh, been great to see the reaction to the 2020 Stingray. It's a real honor for me uh, to lead this team that's writing this new book on Corvette. And tonight we're going to add another chapter with the convertible. I'd like to introduce one of our engineering leaders who's been instrumental in bringing both the coupe and the convertible to life. 
Josh Holder, our program manager, has dreamt since his youth of being able to work on Corvette, and now his dreams have come true. It's really my pleasure to introduce Josh and let him tell you about some of the highlights from the convertible. Good evening, everyone. Like Tad said, I've dreamed of working on Corvette since I was a kid. I'm excited to be a part of a talented team that is launching this game changer. The first retractable hardtop, mid-engine, Corvette Stingray convertible. I still can't believe I get to do this. <laughs> the convertible is more than just a Corvette minus the roof. Open air driving has been a hallmark of Corvette since the beginning. In fact, the first generation Corvette debuted in 1953 as a convertible only. Keeping that tradition, we started engineering the all-new mid-engine Corvette as a convertible from the beginning. We developed the foundation, the stiff, lightweight, aluminum and composite body structure with a large central tunnel Imagine manage torsion and bending loads in the coupe when the roof panel is out, and of course, in the stain rate convertible when the top is down. This assures the convertible maintains that comfortable, stable, yet nimble foundation worn out of the coupe. The low profile rocker section allows for easy entry and exit while connecting revolutionary high pressure die castings that provide a foundation that's stiffer than any Corvette before and allows the rest of the chassis to provide outstanding driving dynamics. The two-panel retractable hardtop operates in 16 seconds at speeds up to 30 miles per hour at the touch of a button. Perfect if you have to dodge one of those pop-up rain showers. And from what we saw last night, they're common around here. <laughs> the top uses six electric motors with encoders that enable precise operation and allow the roof to fold neatly over the LT2 small block engine at the heart of the 2020 Corvette Stingray. A key attribute that we maintain from the coupe is utility. The Stingray offers the same impressive ability to store two sets of golf clubs even when the top is down. The convertible also carries the coupe's front storage compartment, which can fit an airline spec carry-on and a laptop bag. The rear glass panel is power adjustable to reduce wind noise when the top is down. It can also be lowered when the top is up if you want to hear a little more thunder from the 495 horsepower LT2 small block. The Stingray convertible was specifically tuned for ride and handling, including racetracks like Germany's famed Nürburgring. Designed alongside the coupe, the convertible with the top up matches its outstanding aerodynamic performance, providing 400 pounds of downforce at 180 miles per hour when equipped with the Z51 package. We're still continuing our testing. So we don't have final performance numbers to share today. We expect similar outstanding performance numbers, much like the coupe's sub three second, zero to 60 acceleration performance. But the story of convertible is much more than just performance and functionality. It's also about design. And here to tell you more is Chevrolet Executive Design Director, Phil Zach. Thanks for that, Josh. Uh, the goal of the convertible was to maintain the design uh, luggage created, <laughs> the design language created by the coupe. Uh, the big challenge was to maintain the dynamic and cohesive design aesthetic, and additionally meet the functional requirements of a convertible. There are multiple articulating parts that form the roof, from the tonneau, the trunk lid, along with multiple interior parts. The designers had to work hand in hand with the engineers to seamlessly incorporate them into the design you see here today. We had to make sure that we maintain the exotic feel of the convertible, just as we had done for the coupe. We view this as an opportunity to create a bold look inspired by aircraft and race cars. Now, removing the upper on the vehicle can interrupt the visual flow of the silhouette. With the addition of the uh, nacelles behind the passenger seat, we visually complete the dynamic appearance. They help direct your eye from the top of the windshield to the rear of the car, keeping the exotic sleek proportion that we wanted to maintain. Like all Corvettes, aerospace and jet aircraft are the inspiration for the designers, and the nacelles are no exception. Nacelles were also used as inspiration on the Chevrolet engineering research vehicles, or as we like to call them, the CERV. CERV 1 and CERV 2, as well as the Corvette SS and SR2 concepts. Now when the top is down, 
The nacelles serve as a visual bridge between the exterior and the interior. They visually echo the passenger seating environment and give admirers a glimpse of the interior selection. The nacelles are also styling enablers that function and streamline the air around the upper to reduce cabin buffeting. And the retractable center glass also helps to reduce air recirculation in the cabin. Another challenge with the car was the engine cooling through the tunnel cover. The cooling requirements gave the designers an additional opportunity to expand on the jet fighter inspiration with bold vents on many aerospace applications. You've heard us talk about how racing has inspired the design of the new Corvette, but racing also helped influence the development and validation of the convertible as well. With its tremendous success on the track over the last 20 years, Corvette racing has helped push the development performance and popularity of our top line performance cars on racetracks across the world. In 1999, or since 1999, Corvette Racing has won 107 races, the most of any professional sports car team in North America. And this includes 13 team championships, 12 driver and manufacturer titles as well. And in 2015, we became the first sports car team in 15 years to win the Endurance Racing's Triple Crown. Victories at Rolex, 24 hours at Daytona, 12 hours of Sebring, and 24 hours of Le Mans in the same season. So, and we are only just getting started. C5R in 1999, developed alongside the 2020 Corvette Stingray, there's a deeper level of technology transfer between the production car and the race car than ever before. This new color scheme will be joined by our more traditional yellow color scheme that you're all familiar with when the C8R makes its racing debut at the Rolex 24 at Daytona on January 25th, 2020. We'll have more details to share with you on this awesome racing machine at Petit Le Mans next weekend. And I can tell you it's truly revolutionary from my experience testing it. Now I'd like to have Taj come back up and wrap it up for us. Wow, it's pretty impressive, wasn't it? it sounds pretty awesome too. Um, amazing race car. Uh, can't wait to see it on the track next year, and I know Tommy and the whole team, whole racing team, is going to make us super proud of what they do with it. So I'm sure everybody's thinking now, okay, there's a convertible, when are we going to get it, how much is it going to cost? Uh, in July, when we introduced the coupe, uh, the Stingray, uh, people were pretty shocked that we introduced it at $60,000. Um, and we plan to build the convertible starting next year, first quarter uh, of next year, we'll start building convertibles alongside the coupe. And it'll continue the value proposition that we're famous for on Corvette. So the tracking hard top and actually some other uh, standard equipment requires a premium of $7,500. So it's going to start at $67,495. Uh, if you check it out, <laughs> we really the tracking hard tops, that's a bargain. We really expect the convertible to play a strong role in Corvette's future as it has in the past. It's really a unique market offering, one button, open air, but it combines that with the looks, the quiet, interior security, and the luggage room uh, of the coupe. It's a no-lose proposition. We think it's going to be really popular. So I invite you to come uh, take a closer look up here, both the convertible and the CRR, CRR, and thanks for coming out and joining us.